All right, so I need to talk to you about uh, <coughs> a couple of theorems, uh, the first being Rolle's theorem. And here's what Rolle's theorem, uh, here's the statement of Rolle's theorem. Let f <coughs> be a function that satisfies these uh, three little qualities right here. <coughs> F is a function that satisfies number one. F is continuous on the interval A to B, closed interval, which means includes the endpoints. Number two, F is differentiable on A, B. But the open interval is called AB because it does not include the endpoints. But anyway, so F is continuous from A to B. F is differentiable <coughs> on A to B, basically. And then number three, we've got a very specific criteria. And that is F of A equals F of B. <coughs> All right, so that's the premises, if you will, of, uh, of this theorem. The conclusion of this theorem is this. Then there is a value C in the interval A to B such that such that <clears throat> f prime of c equals zero. Okay. There's a value. <clears throat> I got my word there, but I said it, didn't write it. There is a value c in the interval a to b such that f prime of c equals zero. Now just looking at that, uh, I guess without really thinking of it, it just seems kind of arbitrary stuff. Here's what it all means. If you look at the graph of this, it uh, maybe will make, make some sense here. Okay, so let's say we've got a function and all we're looking at, notice, is from this uh, interval A to B. All right, <clears throat> let's, start, uh, let's start with number three. On number three, we've got the function value at A, which would be the y value, the function value at A, so the point there, let's say, is right there. So that's f of A. Guess where then f of B is? Same, same level, yeah. So f of A equals f of B means those two points are the same level, if you will. Okay, <clears throat> so what this means is uh, f is continuous, so that just means there's no breaks, right? You can't have a break in it. If it's differentiable, what does that mean? No breaks, but it also means no corners, things like that. So it's basically got to somehow come back around. I mean, it can do a lot more stuff. I mean, you can have that. I just did a small little interval here. You can make it smaller, but you can make it bigger too. So there, there can be a lot of things that happen on your uh, graph there, but. Uh, Basically, you got to start at this point and then at some point come back to that point. I mean, whether you go up and down and then come back, uh, <clears throat> we could do that. Maybe make a little more space. But, you know, ultimately, it's going to come back to be that level, okay? All right, so that's, that's what it looks like. Now, what, is this, what does this mean? There's a value C in A to B such that f prime of c equals zero. What does this mean right here? The derivative is zero, horizontal tangent. There is a c where there's a horizontal tangent. Now we did a couple of examples here. There's 
you know, possibly more, but um, we can certainly verify it for these. Isn't there a C where that's true here? Right there. Now, on this one, what about that one? There's three C's that would work there, right? This one, this one, and this one. Take your pick. All three of those C's would be uh, be valid, right? Because you've got horizontal tangents there, there, and there. But Rolle's theorem says no matter what, no matter what the function is, as long as it's continuous and differentiable, there's going to be one horizontal tangent somewhere in there. Okay? So what are we going to do with that? Well, here's what we're going to do with that. Let's verify... <clears throat> this erased here, okay. Verify the function satisfies the hypotheses. Of Rolle's theorem then find C this is kind of the wording they'll use then find C that satisfies the conclusion of Rolle's theorem and this is our function f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 3 0 to 5 Verify the function satisfies the hypotheses of Rolle's theorem. So <clears throat> the hypotheses, that's those three criteria the, uh, that we numbered one, two, three there. <clears throat> so we want to verify that. They're satisfied and then uh, find C. Because here's the thing, we ha haven't talked a lot about theorems. What if one of the, the th criteria was not satisfied? Well, if one of the cr criteria is not satisfied, Rowe's theorem does not apply. And so these three are important. You've got to have all three hypotheses true before Rowe's theorem kicks in. If one of them is not true, then all bets are off, okay? Theorem doesn't apply. All right, so what do you want to do? <coughs> well, so here's your hypotheses. Uh, number one hypothesis is what? Uh, F is continuous on A to B. Is that true here? Well, <coughs> there's our function. Is there anywhere it's not continuous? No, that's, that's a parabola. It's continuous everywhere. Yeah, <coughs> this particular F is continuous everywhere. All real numbers, I probably should say better there, but so it's definitely continuous on 0 or 5. So it's just basically thinking about that. Is there anywhere it's not continuous and if it's anywhere in that? But that's not true here. Alright, <clears throat> so if it's continuous on A to B, sure is. 0 to 5 it is. Alright, what's the second one? Second hypothesis is if it's differentiable on AB. Well, again, we just got a, a nice little function here, just a parabola and uh, an x squared second degree equation. <clears throat> Is there anywhere that would not be dif differentiable? It's differentiable everywhere. <clears throat> For all real numbers, let's say, so it's definitely differentiable on 0, 5. And again, that's a open interval, but anyway, okay. <clears throat> then what was the third one? Third one's kind of the one that has a little more work with it. F of, Z, F of A equals F of B. Is that true? What is, uh, what is F of A? This is my A, this is my B. So I have F of 0, do it, F of 0 would be 0 squared, minus 5 times 0 plus 3, so that would be 3. 
if 0 is 3. If uh, 5, if a 5 would be 5 squared, minus 5 times 5 plus 3, and hey, how about that? It's 25 minus 25 plus 3, which is 3. Check, check. F of A does equal F of B. With me? So that's that's uh, verifying that the function satisfies the hypotheses right there, okay? Check, check, check. All right. <clears throat> What's the last thing? Then find C that satisfies the conclusion. All right, so let's work on that down here. C that satisfies the conclusion. Well, what is the conclusion? The conclu conclusion says I need to find an f prime of c that equals zero, right? So that would probably mean let's go ahead and think about uh, the derivative. Uh, the derivative is uh, here, two x minus five, and so I want to find f prime of c that equals zero. How do I do that? Well, set f prime equal to zero, right? Plug in zero for f prime. <clears throat> so that would be uh, so add five divided by two. Five halves would be uh, where the derivative equals zero. So what does that mean c is? So c equals five halves would satisfy the conclusion, right? Okay, so it's, that's the basics, uh, basics of this uh, Rolle's theorem. Okay, um, now <clears throat> again, let me just mention uh, mention another example here just to show you all right let's say I've got uh, f of x equals 1 over x squared okay and <clears throat> on that function f of 2 is one fourth, right? F of negative two is one fourth, right? Both those match. So I've got the same function value both. However, if I look at uh, the derivative, what would the derivative here be? The derivative here would be, uh, since that's uh, x to minus two, that would be minus two, uh, x to minus three, wouldn't it? Down doing derivatives, not antiderivative. So we're subtracting one. Just bring down the power and subtract one from the power. Okay, well, if I set that to zero, which it's, you know, minus two over x cubed is what that is, do I have a solution there? There's no such thing, is there? Because if I multiply there by x cubed both sides, I get 0 equals negative 2, which is, yeah, there's no solution to that. Huh. Why is that? I've got the two function values are the same here. f of 2 is 1 fourth, f of negative 2 is 1 fourth. But there's no, there's no uh, horizontal tangent in there. Why doesn't that violate Rolle's theorem? because there's not a horizontal tangent in there. That's what that says. There's no horizontal tangent anywhere, matter of fact. It's because, why? It's not, yes, F is not continuous. F is not continuous on where? At zero, okay?
and zero is definitely in uh, in the interval negative two to two, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what we're saying. <clears throat> if there's one of those hypotheses that is violated here, doesn't work, the Rolle's theorem doesn't apply. So that this, no, this doesn't violate at all Rolle's theorem because F is not continuous. So it has to be all three things in theorems, you know, they, they never give you extraneous stuff, okay? In theorems you get what you see is what you need. And so in this case we need those, all three things for Rolle's theorem to apply. Continuous, differentiable, and the function values the same. Okay? All right. <clears throat>